Welcome to Root Bible. For those of you that don't know, this is the adult class of uh, our Handle with Care series, but this is the last day of it. It's the last day of the course, so if you uh, missed it, you can still quickly enroll in Handle with Care and get all the recordings of all the previous classes. So this would be the eighth class for the adults in the Handle with Care series where we've gone over things that we need to handle with care. And so today, well, before I get into it, Pastor Kate is coming. I know some of you look worried already. You're like, wait, where's Pastor Kate? She's coming. Don't worry about it. She'll be here in a little bit. Uh, we had just a few minutes between this class and a previous class, and the kids were desperate for her attention. It, they uh, they love mommy, all mommy's attention all the time. And so she's working at getting back in here. If you want to join us live and join the conversation, because right now, for those of you on Facebook or YouTube, you're just seeing us Um, just the video of us. We actually have a whole group of people that we're chatting with, and you'll hear from them here in a second. Or you can hear some people unmuting themselves now. (laughs) Holly has a rooster at her house. It's awesome. Anyway, so you can join and be part of the live conversation, ask questions, interact with us. So in order to do that, you would just go to rootbible.com and join the current series is Handle with Care. That one, this is what today you would join. It looks like that. And then next week, though, we're starting a new course called The Real You. I'm super excited about The Real You course because it's all on identity. We're kind of going into that a little bit today. Uh, Even last week, we hit on identity some. But it's going to be all about Who did God make you to be? And the Bible is very clear on who he's made humanity and who he's made you to be. And so if you want you to grow through that, join us every Wednesday, 1030 or whatever, you know, at this time in your time zone. Or if you want your family to grow in it, there's classes for every age group. Uh, Tomorrow night, there's a class for the whole family to join in together. It is So worth investing in you, in your family, and getting them fully uh, saturated with truth. Because everywhere in the world is not. I was thinking today, water, like fire changes something immediately. Are you going to do that in class today? You want, no, I didn't prep. You want me to? Water changes something, or (laughs) fire changes something instantly. But the word is referred to as water. And water takes not millions of years, as some scientists apart from Christ would say, but water takes time to carve a path, right? I saw a video about this huge canyon that was made in uh, two weeks' time with flooding, and it was this huge canyon. And that, Anyway, never mind. I'm sidetracking. The water carves it out, right? So what do we have to do? We have have plants. We have new... uh, new seeds we plant. We have a a root nursery that we're starting and uh, we've got to water them every day. And it cannot be different for us. It cannot be different for the seed, the new seed of life we have inside of us. Otherwise, it gets dried up and it's neglected and and it's going to rely on other things to try to pull nutrients from. That could go into a whole lesson on gardening. But the same is going to happen with our kids. If we don't give them the right way to think, the world will give them another way. It's just going to happen. They are immersed. We are immersed in the world. And if we're not pulling from the dominion of the kingdom of light, then we will naturally pull from something to fill the gap. So we need the washing of the water of the word every day, the truth of the word. And that's not just, oh, we sit down as a family in a circle and read the Bible. You know what I mean? Like Dad has to learn how to play guitar quick so we can sing songs. Trump. You know, this, like I know we've gotten this uh, perspective that's come from media. It's actually come from the world of what it's supposed to look like. But what it is supposed to it's look like, the, like the is family knowing and who family we are. camp. The fa- yeah. <laughs> Has anyone seen the movie Family Camp? <laughs> like where they anoint their family with the, the oil before, before bed. bed. And the other yeah. Christian family's like, yeah, we do that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. anyway Sidetracked. 
Uh, that total sidetrack, but the washing <laughs> of the word, that's the only thing that's going to bring change is the word of God, because it's going to feed that seed, the seed of life that's already inside of us. It's inside our kids. It's generational. Just this morning we were mm-hmm. talking, uh, has anyone ever heard the verse? And I, I couldn't find it. The threefold cord is not easily broken. No, oh, it's in like Ecclesiastes. I just So a lot of people in. use it when referring to prayer. Right? A three-fold cord is not easily broken. Two together, you know, like blah, blah, blah. But it, what it's talking about is generationally, which is why... They, never mind. That would which is why... It. Oh, sheesh. This is <laughs> why uh, we do what we do. And the Lord said, you will not limit what age you teach this to. Is because that, that, that generational thing is so important. And it's all throughout the word. And when it says a three-strand uh, three cord is not easily broken, it's talking about generationally. So we get that. Can you imagine just the revelation that he's giving to us? And we're getting in our kids at a younger earthly age and what they're going to be able to live out and so on. So uh, that is powerful. Knowing who they are, getting them. Re- I mean, the class is free. If you can get them in, that's yeah. great. Ecclesiastes 4.12. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't read Ecclesiastes, though. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's such a tough book. Like everything is good for nothing. You just told people on Root Bible to not read <laughs> no, the Bible. Do read, do this, read it. Don't take that. Sh- uh, James, the, if you're watching this, very, don't take that clip and put that out there to advertise. It was a very Root. That would down be bad. time for this wah, book. No. Wah, wah. But it says, uh, uh, let's see, let's do King James. <laughs> no, Amplified. And though one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. It's not talking about prayer there. It's talking about generations. So that if you're building generations for the kingdom of God, that that they will not be broken, right? So mm-hmm. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing. And so today we're talking about sin is stupid. Sin is stupid. <laughs> I just had to use that word just because it's funny. Uh, sin, sin is stupid for us as 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 believers. And then even uh, I don't know how many people I've actually talked to that have questions about, hey. You know, when I got saved, I know the Spirit made me brand new, but I'm still tempted. I'm still tempted for sin, and I know I'm not supposed to do it, but I just give in sometimes, and I still struggle with wrong thoughts about myself or, or others. So yeah. so what do I do about this? And then there's verses that don't feel like they really help me, like Colossians 3.9. Do not lie to one another since you've laid aside the old self with its evil practices. Well, I know that I've, it says it's laid, been laid aside past tense, but why am I still struggling with these thoughts? Why am I still feeling like I'm given to sin in certain areas or certain uh, thought patterns or things like that? When the word says, don't lie, just stop it. Just stop it. I can't stop talking about this person that I don't care for and I know doesn't care for me. I can't stop thinking this way about someone in my life, uh, which I know I shouldn't be thinking about them. I can't stop feeling this way towards my neighbor who has done me wrong more than once. I Right? Fill in the mm-hmm. blank. I can't stop thinking this way about myself in this area. It just keeps coming back, right? And, and, and we would call that... Uh, tempted temptation or a nature that we're identifying with to be Christ is not enough and this nature is stronger and this is what I'm struggling with. It's pretty rough, but it's true. It's true. So many are struggling with these things as Christians and then are trying to put on a good facade and look good for everybody else while they're inward feeling like they're dying or struggling or have completely missed the mark or have got to a place where they can no longer be used by God or God no longer is speaking to them because of maybe something they did or didn't do. As all lies of the enemy to keep us trapped into our old nature, our old nature, our old wrong thinking. Mm-hmm. And, and where, so, where is that nature from? So wait, the I like our, our big darkness. main cue then is how brand new are you? That's our big cue. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about. How brand new. If the whole, we know the Holy Spirit came in and made us brand new, why am I still dealing with these things? And we don't and that's mean new not to brand you. brand new. You know and when so, people say, they, I got a new card, a car. A car, new car. And they're like, well, it's new to me. Like, well, then it's not new. 
<laughs> like the the way that we can twist the word new can make us start to read the word mm-hmm. in the twisted manner of which we use it in our speech on a daily basis. So mm-hmm. how brand new are we? And so you know what ends up happening is we go from the perspective that in, because I don't feel brand new, that means God took me to a certain level, but he wasn't able to finish the work. We don't right. say that with our words, but we say that with our actions that Okay, he can only make only made me brand new to a point, and now I have to finish his work with my own ability, and and I gotta figure out all these solutions, and I I just don't know how to do it, and not but I can't stay the way I'm at, but I don't know how to get forward, and it begins to be this whole self centered spiral, downward spiral, of of failure. Or like you get to the point that the devil got where if I could just sit on his throne, I could run things differently because this isn't working. I know that sounds rough, but this is what keeps people in a cycle of being defeated when they are victorious already. This is a cycle that will keep parents and children and families and generations defeated because they think I've been made brand new, but my pastor doesn't see me that way. I've been made brand new, but my community doesn't see me that way. I've been made brand new, but my neighbor doesn't see me that way. I've been made brand new. My spouse doesn't see me that way. So I'm going to see myself through their eyes for a time because, you know, they don't see me that way. They see my past. They see my experience. They see where I'm from. They see what I've done. Right. And then we will determine brand new by new to me, but not to you. No. (laughs) What, how brand new are we? And the same goes for our kids. The same goes for anyone that we're ministering to. It does not change by how we see their age. It does not change by how we see how long they've been in the faith. Right. I had someone contact me last night and said, I feel this way. I said, good. Tell that feeling what to do. It's not easy (laughs) to talk this way because people want to be like, oh, they are there. You know, I said, listen, I understand. Oh, have I had that feeling? Yes, I can relate with the realness, the reality of that overwhelming sensation of hopelessness, of fear, fill in the blank. Right. Any of us can relate with that. Our soul knows. But what supersedes that is the brand newness, the brand newness that is not moved by feeling. It's not moved by sight. It's not moved by the five senses, the brand newness that is uncompromised by that feeling you are feeling right now. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that feeling must be brought under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We do that with ourselves. We do that with our kids. We do that with our neighbors. We do that with our friends. We do that with anyone who professes Jesus Christ. And if they haven't, we give them an opportunity to profess Jesus Christ. And then we do it with him. <laughs> like, oh, <Yep>. no. <laughs> if you want a girl, I'm going to do a, a side note plug here. Before, and then we're going to jump into some scriptures right off the bat. But if you want to grow in this, we actually have two great options that just started. We have the Root Reboot. Reboot. I'm sounding like I'm northern right there. Our he Root is Reboot northern. is... Uh, started today. Actually, yep. first class, the recording will be uploaded uh, later today. And then there's worksheets and homework you can do every single time. So you can grow with us in that. And then that's every weekday, yep. 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific, or not Pacific time, Eastern. 6 a.m. Pacific time, 9 a.m. Eastern, Eastern. time. Uh, what is that? 1 oh. p.m. in London, because we have some people from London talking about joining and I and feel Australia bad for the you in Australia. They it's have to watch the replay. It's uh, yeah, it's yeah. a tough time. Yeah. So anyway, so join the reboot, and like I said, all the recordings go up as well. And so if you want to do that, do that. And then I also I just lost it. Did you switch it on me? Yes, I you did. did. I did. All right. I did. And then <laughs> Pastor Kate just started a weekday. Um, podcast as well. So some of oh right over your face. Ooh, That's hi, perfect. Look, Hello. A picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong position, but anyway, she started a seven-minute seed podcast. So if yep. you don't have the ability to jump in for an hour with us each weekday and reboot your thinking with the word, she's doing a nugget at every single day uh, that she's recording, and they're really good. So check out that podcast. I like it. 
you'll like it. So anyway. <laughs> he loves nuggets for mom. I like nuggets. <laughs> I like nuggets that I get to listen to, but don't. then it's done at seven minutes. And so <laughs> That's true. That's true. We just started one of our favorite preachers, Curry Blake. We just started one of his messages, and Josh was like, it's four hours. <laughs> I'm like, and we always like re-listen. So like four hours for us is like... 16. So I just told my friends, I was like, this is what I'll be listening to for the week. For real? <laughs> yes. It's really not four hours. I looked, it felt like four hours. It was two hours oh, long. <laughs> but probably because he kept going back. Yeah, we, yeah, we kept, we, and then kept pausing it for interruptions. And that's okay. Anyway. Grow, grow, grow. Water, water, water. Grow, grow, grow. We are in mm-hmm. a world that's under the dominion of darkness. We need to pull from the di- true dominion of light. Not the feeling of, not the mm-hmm. thinking, like the thought. I think it might be, no, right. the true dominion of light, the seed of the word of God. We need to be drawing from that as much as we can. And we need to be helping our kids do the same. Yeah, you'll never have a firm footing to stand against the enemy if you're so saturated with his tactics and his perspectives that you're seeing the fight from his side. Yes. You can't do it. It won't work. Yeah. And so you have to, and what some people would say is go overzealous yeah. and and just focus on kingdom. You know, think of like, all of the names that we celebrate now, like Smith Wigglesworth yeah. and all these big, big names from history that really made a big impact, took an extreme stance against anything carnal, even being allowed in their house. Smith Wigglesworth said that uh, he doesn't allow the newspaper in his house. And when he was asked why, why no newspaper? He said, when I read the newspaper, by the end, I always feel dirty. When I read the word, in the end, I always feel clean. I do not want to be dirty. I'm going to remain clean. And that's simple. It's easy. But we don't think about that. And we just flick on the TV for such and such show that has carnal perspectives and carnal actions being celebrated and carnal relationships being dealt with. And we inadvertently teach ourselves and our families this is how we react in a situation. This is how we think. Well, if this opportunity is presented to you, it's okay to dabble in that because you always know there's a good ending in the end and you can always get back to whatever. And in the TV, it's it's resolved in 30 minutes and everyone's smiley, everyone's happy, and it's not showing the devastation created Carnal, in Carnal, the Carnal, lives nature, nature, of darkness. someone that would actually follow that path. Right. What the enemy is not going to show you the results of it. He wants to show you the uh, idealistic, sinful side. Idealistic for him. Yeah, God makes it clear, doesn't he? Choose life or death. Mm-hmm. I wish that you would choose life. Life is a seed inside of us. Life is available to us through Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus mm-hmm. is the Word of God. The Spirit has been given to us to lead us into all truth of the Word of mm-hmm. God, not our feelings, not our uh, thinking on it towards it, religiosity, churchianity, mm-hmm. none of that. So we must call brand new what is brand new. Wait, and I, got, that is... I got a good, and, and then we'll get into that analogy. Well, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> eventually. It's like when, do you remember when we were getting our store bought eggs? We were just getting the cheapy at that time, oh 88 cent ones that are now $8.88. <laughs> Uh, we were getting just the cheapy eggs, and we would make breakfast for ourselves. And we knew, you know, for Kate and I to have eggs, it was going to be seven, eight eggs, yep. and that would begin to don't judge fill us. us. We were working out at the time, <laughs> <laughs> but we did. We made like and, seven or eight eggs uh-huh. just for us. The kids and were then young, really young. We got uh, chickens, and we fed them only good food. They were having greens from our garden that we were growing, garden. and they were garden and. Now I'm going, what, with that Northeastern? Anyway. Yeah. But and even... All organic foods and all... I mean, we were feeding them really well. And they started producing eggs. Intended. And we're like, woohoo, we're going to make eggs. And so we waited until we had eight eggs uh, from these chickens. And we're like, it's all the time. Or scramble egg time. And so we whipped them all up. And we could not get through half of them. We were, we were so stuffed. stuffed. I'm yeah. like... Can can you eat some of mine? She's like, are you kidding me? I'm handing it over. And, Which I normally and, have no problem eating his excess food. But, <laughs> but that, this time, we, we were, could not finish eight eggs from our chickens who were well fed. And what was the difference? It was because of the content in those eggs. Yeah. And so many of us are, are being, even when we try to turn to 
God things are going to things that are so still full of things that tickle our carnal nature. They, it makes it fun to listen to or easy to listen to. And they have all these silly stories like the one I just told. Or they have um, jokes and other aspects to it that are not bad, but they're also not good. And they're not equipping you for life and godliness. It's filling your time so that you feel better that you've invested an hour in spiritual growth when in really there was little spiritual growth happening. There was no nutrients in the delivery. The same as worship that is edifying to your mm -hmm. carnal or solical nature and not actually worshiping God. It's the same idea. And this is the tactic of the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. If I can get you to think the things outside of God are just okay enough or you're not all the way brand new which we're talking mm -hmm. about then he's twisted it enough to keep us outside of what rightfully belongs to us and should be living in and through us but when we then begin to go on a journey back to my exit again mm -hmm. we begin to go on a journey to find things that really saturated us we're nutrient dense not nutrient deficient and we had uh our tastes begin to quickly change. We would go through the drive through and be like, oh, I'm so glad we're eating styrofoam and plastic with a, a topping of chemicals oh. on there. This is nasty. The things that we used to look forward to. Yeah. Oh, we're going through our drive through This is going to be amazing. All of a sudden, lost, uh, we lost our appetite for it completely. And it began not to be hard not to go to those fast food drive through places yeah. because we had things that were so nutrient dense so satisfying to we our no bodies that those other things that we used to look to or forward to or long for i'm just craving a greasy burger I'm not saying that we still don't do a greasy burger every now and then but i'm um, fairly only but, a really good greasy burger oh, man. i'm gonna make my <laughs> mouth don't make me when we dow dove into the things that really mattered the things that were nutrient dense physically it changed our appetite quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with spiritual things, with spiritual ourselves stuff. and our families. When yeah. we dive into things that are nutrient dense spiritually, right. all of a sudden we are so saturated with him that the longing for the old uh, isn't there. Right. That's why Galatians, I believe it's 516 says, walk by the spirit and you will no longer fulfill the desires of your you flesh. You won't want to. You won't want to. It w the longing won't be there because you're so saturated with him, with spiritual nutrients. Well, the Spirit that says you're he not. has come to reveal truth. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking by the Spirit, you're walking by truth. A great question on Facebook by Angela. Hi, Angela. <laughs> is why do people think living, why do we think people living that way we're speaking about is so hard, right? I think mm -hmm. what you're saying is like, why, why do so many people remain not living in truth or not? Or think about hey, this way is so extreme. I understand right. you guys are teaching this class. And so you have to be extreme, but for me and my family, we can't go there. We just, right. that's not feasible for mm -hmm. us. That's not realistic for our lifestyle. He even like punch somebody. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, well, he was being led by the spirit. So they will refer to someone who is living a life in Christ, what is actually brand new as extreme because they want to hold on to their fleshly nature. So to answer that question is, I believe they are lying to themselves. Well, it goes back to the egg analogy. When we experienced what was a real egg for the first time in our lives, mm -hmm. even though we'd grown up on eggs, all of a sudden, all that other, it began to immediately begin to change our taste buds, and we began to look for what was actually nutrient dense. Yeah. The mo majority of those that would say it's so hard, I would honestly say, haven't met him. They, they don't haven't... know him in his power they in have his been, reality they have been taught a fake him for so long they are now lying to themselves mm -hmm. that the fake fruit they're producing is him and so they get in this cycle of this is what i've been told it is even though i sense it's not real and i feel deprived and my emotions are still leading me and my thoughts that are not rooted in him mm -hmm. are still guiding me is because they've been told a lie for so long they've made it truth in their life even though they know it has zero fruit 
or mm-hmm. fake fruit. That's why I truly believe. Now, I say the twisting of the enemy through the church. So these people are not always to blame. There are people that have heard the truth and still choose to eat at McDonald's. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there, are, there are. There is a choice to lie to myself and say I'm brand new enough. But there are those that genuinely don't know what is inside of them, what's available to them, and they've learned that the almost truth they're almost brand new enough that they that is what they've held on to and they don't see the word of god coming to pass in their life because they've stopped there they don't know any better Mm -hmm. so they've been taught wrong they live wrong and they live from the carnal nature calling it christ and that's what we refer to as churchianity they end up lying to themselves um our pastor put it a good way uh false prophet unto themselves because they've decided what is true for them outside of the word and they're living that and calling it Christ. And that is why we think so many people come up short. Now, most often that is because they have not actually experienced truth. We Mm -hmm. were in a wonderful ministry school and we still picked up wrong thinking towards the word of God, towards ministry, towards walking out life and life abundantly. And then it wasn't until we withdrew ourselves by the leading of the Lord, don't leave church. We still attended church, <laughs> but we had to remove ourselves from, from the thought patterns that were developed by teaching to us to we're going to take all of those thought patterns and filter them through the word. And any that aren't there, get booted. Bottom line, whether it came from a good teacher at Bible school, a good pastor that we were under, what, whatever, fill in the blank. We just finally got to a point where we did not see the promises of God enough that we stepped back and went, nope. Just because we think that's true and just because we've been told that's true and just because we've been told that's how to pray and that just because we've been told that's what to expect, I want to see it in the word for myself. And we took all of those teachings and we took them straight to the word. And the same goes for anything we would teach or you encounter Mm -hmm. on a daily basis as your teaching, because often it's the Holy Spirit teaching through you or the soul and the spirit come and one's fighting the other. You've got to weed through with the word of God what is true and what is reality so that it can be life and life abundantly in you and what isn't, it can be booted out. It doesn't belong there. Now, are we saying that you have to leave church to go on this journey? (laughs) No, No. please don't. Are we saying that if you find that your pastor is saying something that is not lining up with the word in an area that you immediately need to tell everyone and (laughs) then leave the church? No. No. How do you know what church to go to? Ask the Holy Spirit. He shows you. You plug in. You support. Is there a single pastor out there that knows the perfect word and and has the fullness of understanding in any area, every area. No. No. Why would we put that on them? Who do we depend on to teach us? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. So as the pastor's teaching it, you know what we do? We say, Holy Spirit, help me catch what you're trying to teach me today. Yep. Because who am I relying on to teach me? The Holy Spirit. If you're sitting in a, in a class like this, if you're on, on with talking with us, I don't want you to be listening to us as the source of truth. I want you to be listening to the Holy Spirit while you're listening to us and letting him guide you into all truth. That's where spiritual growth comes from. Right. And I assure you, this is a good way to identify you're not listening to the Holy Spirit while you're sitting in a service or a class. And that's if the spirit of heresy judge comes up. (laughs) That was wrong. That was incorrect. I can't believe they said that. He said that. She said whatever. Right. That spirit there is not God. Okay, that was Sadducees, Pharisees, they all had that, right? They were listening for him to mess up, so they heard it in the form that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. Even though he was, could Jesus not speak truth? No, he, he couldn't. He spoke truth, but they chose to hear it wrongly. Right. So there, there is still that ability to go by the spirit of God or the spirit of this world. You need to know that you're listening by the Spirit of God so He can lead us into all truth yep. and our children. And that is a daily thing. With So them. let's dive into how brand new did He make us? How brand new are you then so that you can begin to make this transition? Maybe you're already in that transition and you just need a message saying, You're headed the right way. Keep going. Don't give up. It's so worth it. And so we're going to start with looking at two different scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Might. Might. We have the ability, but he does not force us into it. 
And then Romans 6, 6 says, We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. I think that one's so fun. I'm going to pause on that one. Then we're going to put mash them t- the two together. It says we are no longer slaves to sin. But then just before the sentence before that says, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. How is that possible? That And that's that's the argument that a lot of people are, are dealing with. Yeah. Sin is has power in my life, yet the ver- word says we are no longer slaves to sin. Well, we are no longer. Sl- sin is no longer our master, but we can still choose to empower sin, sin or hinder in our sin lives that lead to sin. Right. It's up to us now, just like God made him to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He doesn't force you into it. Right. It would not be a relationship if he was forcing us into all of these things. That's not or a, not a healthy relationship. Hey, you're we're married, so you have to do this and you have to do that. I mean, those of you in the in the live chat with us, how would you react if your spouse came home tonight and said, hey, we're married, so you have to do this and you have to do that and you're no longer able to do this? It probably wouldn't <laughs> go well. Yeah, I see a thumbs down from Tara. Like, no, no. I'm Holly sorry, won't what? do anything that, other than smile. She's like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to react. I won't. No, I'm not going to because my husband might watch this. No. So we know it probably would not go well. God knows us. He made us that way. Right? And so he, what is he going to do? He's going to be a gentleman. Here's the avenue. This is better. Choose life. Choose to be free from sin. How do we do that? We got to recognize then that the old self is completely done away with. That we have died to sin. Let me, or I can even say it this way that in God's eyes, the old sinner you has completely died to the same degree that Jesus completely died on the cross. Jesus completely died on the cross and paid the price for all of our sins, period. That means you are sin free. Sin free. The dominion of sin the, or of the the mastery for sin. of sin right. in your life is completely gone. He didn't just pull you out of sin. No, Jesus pulled sin out of you so that now you can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's a complete transformation. The word says that we have been buried with Christ. We've been uh we died with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ and now seated at the right hand of God with Christ. It'd be like it'd be, wait, if, it would be like having the new chickens. You're feeding them every day. You, you they are laying eggs, and you go to the store and buy the other eggs and eat them and go. These aren't like those eggs. These aren't what they said they would be. These aren't those nutrient dense. They're not filling me the same way. It's the same idea. I'm still hungry. Let's, You've been given let's go everything to a drive you need and it's available. And yet people will still draw on the emotional. Our children will be tempted to still draw on the carnal. If I just say this one thing, it will feel better to my flesh. If I just carve this one, if I twist this, if I blame my my brother, if I blame my spouse, right? Then I'm just taking that nutrientless egg and trying to say, oh, it's God's fault. It's, it's, that is, it's gone unless you choose to empower it and live from the dominion of darkness, which has no dominion over you. Then unless you choose it, you live from the dominion of light. But if you choose it, you can still participate in the dominion of darkness. It just has no dominion over you. Mm -hmm. You have dominion over it, but will you take it? Do, will you see yourself as sin free and that sin and dominion of darkness is separate from you, it has no place in you? Why would it? It can't. I won't let it. It is no longer my nature. 
I've been given a new nature. I will choose to participate with it rather than the old nature that comes from the dominion of darkness. Why would I? And when people aren't taught this, they stay in a recovery program for 12, 15, 20 years <laughs> because they don't see themselves as new. They don't see themselves as brand new. They see themselves as part new. And the rest, you kind of just got to work out and struggle with. And they call that spiritual warfare, which is not what spiritual warfare right. is. But that's what they've been told it is. So they believe a lie. They lie to themselves. And they remain captive under something that they've already been delivered from. Mm -hmm. It sounds so absurd. You think, why would anyone do that? The Israelites did it. I want to go back and be captive. I want to worship something besides this God who parted the sea and provides my meat and 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 and, and my night, drink by, and or, protects sorry, me in the desert. Day, yes, fire by night. I I need to go back to to what I knew. They were completely delivered, but would choose to go back to slavery. Why they lied to themselves continuously, murmuring and complaining, lying to themselves that it was better than where they were brought to. Isn't that a marvel? And that's what keeps people from walking out their true brand newness is they don't take time to know what that brand newness really is. They focus on what they were and that they still need to change even though it's been completely done away with mm -hmm. and renewing their mind to that. Then, go sorry, on. go ahead. In reality, it's a lot like this. If I took this pen and I put it in my sweet new Bible I just got for don't, my birthday. Don't do that. Look, I put the pen pointed <laughs> out. We're safe. The pen and the Bible. Now, anything that happens, if I put this Bible behind my back, the pen, the pen automatically goes by with it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to try to make that a reality. It's there. If I if I were to bury this Bible, I'd get chewed out by my wife if I tried to do that. The automatic result would be the pen would be buried too. If I brush it off and clean it off and I'm shaking it and raising it and I'm holding it above my head, where's what's the reality for this pen? It's being shaken. It's being held above my head, just like the Bible. Why? Because they are together. My pen is enfolded into this Bible. And the word enfolded. is Do we have that Jesus. That we actually have been enfolded into Christ. Uh, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, uh, or 17, one of the two, 16 and 17. It's actually enfolded. Because it is. It's in the Passions translation. I don't have my notes. I just put them away. Um, but yeah, that we have been enfolded into Christ. Think of a pen folded up into a Bible. Whatever happens to that Bible is what happens to us. Whatever happens to Jesus has happened or is happening to us. So it's not like God is like uh, Santa Claus who's going to overlook the bad things we've done so he can give us some gifts every now and then. But that's how we approach God, right? right. Hey, and you just, you know, I know I've done this and I've done this bad and, and I have this sin perspective and I keep giving in here, but could you just do this good thing in my life? Or on the flip side, we try to earn it by our, by our lack of sin. I haven't given in at all in this area, God. Big badge here. Can't you now do what the word says? Because look at me. I'm being so holy. I'm being so awesome. I, don't you think I deserve it? I've, don't give me coal this time. I want a present. We're treating him like he's Santa Claus. That's the, the thing, the truth would be in that perspective that he's not overlooking the bad things we'd done that year. He's completely erased every bit of naughtiness from your entire being. That's what he's done. There is no naughtiness left. He's already taken care of every sin that all of that has been, the old you has been eliminated. He didn't just give you a pretty screensaver on your computer that's super bogged down, ignoring all the viruses and the spyware and all the stuff that's making it run ridiculously slow and just give you a pretty screensaver so that when it goes to sleep, you're like, oh, yeah, see, it's still nice. It's cute. It's good. No, he wiped that whole hard drive and gave us a new operating system. In Colossians 3, 5, 
Right, he's going, therefore, consider the members of your earthly body. Right before that, he's talking about Christ has made you new. So now you consider your earthly body members dead to it also. Why? Because the flesh will pass away. This flesh cannot enter the, the, the dominion of light. That's why it will get new flesh. This flesh is created out of the dominion of darkness, this earth, right? It cannot pass over. But he says, while you're here, draw from life and, and you know, don't give your, your body parts to immorality. Like, why would you do that? Draw from life, right? For it is on account of those things that the wrath of God will come. And in them, you also once walked. What does I say? Once walked. But you don't anymore when you were living in them, but now you also put them aside. So, you know, when you get something new, like I, I, we have these horrible pens that don't write. So I went and bought some new <laughs> pens. I didn't just keep the horrible, no, no good writing pens with the new pens. Those pens that didn't write well went bloop because I don't want to accidentally grab one and be like, when I'm trying to take a note, uh, that was a little bit, you know, put now <laughs> you also aside anger wrath malice slander and abusive speech from your mouth it's not even an option it's like you have new options so throw those pens that don't work throw the malice the abusive link throw it aside like why would you even like lend yourself to that you don't need it anymore you have new brand new pens that write really good and so even if this is the old pen that i've had for i don't know how many years and i like it because it's nostalgic <laughs> I had these pens when I was in, in high school, and the reason it's still <laughs> filled with ink is because it only works inconsistently. <laughs> but if I write and rewrite over it enough, I, it actually is legible, and I can see the notes, and it's better than getting up and having to get a nice new pen. That's what we do, right? Yeah. This is my nostalgic pen. We can't get rid of this thing. I mean, and it's it's that silly when it comes we, to sin in our new kingdom perspective. We even get to the point where we're like, oh, I love this pen. It's great. You know you're lying, but you're like, oh, I love this pen. It means a lot. It's so great. It's great. Nothing writes like this pen. And you're like, you are <laughs> That's lying. true. Nothing nothing writes like that pen <laughs> because nothing would be, yeah. When, so you put that out. stuff aside and then it goes on to verse 9. It says, do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self and its evil practices. Don't lie to each other. You do not tell anyone they're not new. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what they're saying. It doesn't matter. You are new. You put those things aside. You have new options. And so even you don't have when, to live that way. Even when someone in our family is living from the wrong perspective, you do not have the right to lie to them and say you are opposite of who God says they are. Right. You don't have that right. You do not, and that will not bring life. That's using the enemy's tactics to try to produce a Christian result. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to work. That's what the en people carnally try to do to coerce people or force people into aligning with their will. Yep. But those are not the tools of our kingdom. Here's what that verbiage sounds like. Oh, they're not renewed in this area. Meh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. How will they ever be renewed in that area if you're not speaking the truth, the brand newness over them and not going by what you see? And <laughs> Life and death are in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit of it for death or life. But we sound so righteous and religious when we say, oh, we're not renewed in that area. Then what is brand new? What is? They're either brand new or they're not. And it does not take a long time to, to oh, forcefully walk myself out in this area. No. You put it aside and you start using the new pens. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. And if well, you pick up one that you didn't realize you didn't get rid of, you're like, oh, poopity boop. And it goes out too. Did right? you say poopity boop? I did. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's, that's no, 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 you'll ever hear that one again. You know, it's better than alternatives. I can see Holly. She's like poopity boop. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'll be doing a musical with that as the, <laughs> the title of the song. Poopity boop. It's a yes. Key phrase in Mary Poppins Part Three. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, this this is who you are, and you have to know the truth in order for the truth to set you free. Yeah. Who is the truth? Jesus is. The, just a few versions. She was reading from Colossians 3. I think nine. it was from 5 to about 9, 10-ish. Nine. Mm -hmm. um, Colossians chapter 1, sorry, chapter 3, verse 1, 2, and 3 talk about 
First, put in your heart on things above,、yeah. and then put in your mind on things above. And why? Verse three, because your life is now hidden in Christ. He is the new life.、Yeah. He is the truth, and we can only abide in kingdom realities if we have truth. Coming out of us, we're living from perspectives that the Word tell us are the true, not emotions. The truth does not depend on our emotions. There's days that you may feel like honoring your spouse, respecting them, loving them, and there yeah, are there days, days that you may not feel like it.、Mm -hmm. There are days that you will maybe not feel like doing what you know is right. That feeling does not change what is true in your life. It does not change your reality,、yeah. because who you are has already been set. From the moment you became a Christian, He came in, the Holy Spirit came in and made you brand new. the The old is gone; the new has come. A brand new species of human has entered the earth. That is you. So that feeling to try act like you are not would be as silly as me deciding to wake up this morning and I am going to be a daffodil. <laughs> so that's my existence now. I am a daffodil. Society apart from God. Let's and that's I need everybody to refer to me as a daffodil. I'm gonna dye my hair yellow and I'm gonna paint my arms green and call me Captain Daffodil. Captain has to go with it. That just makes it so much better. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's not my existence in any way. I am so far from being a daffodil that I could never be、um, accidentally accused of, thought of, anything as a daffodil, regardless of what I feel like that day. That's、right. exactly the same with our Christian reality, our new Christ in Him reality. That we've been made completely brand new. The old is gone, completely removed. It has no existence other than a lie that we might believe that we have the right to think a certain way, or that it's okay for me today and God will forgive me. Those are all lies. And we cannot exist in kingdom realities and in lies at the same time. God is truth. They're two different kingdoms. There's、yeah. a, there's the father of lies, and there's the father of truth. You can't say you're living kingdom of heaven realities when saying what the father of lies are saying about you, about a family member, about your church. About the economy, about because what we're not part of any of that. That's all. What it's what happens there, in a sense, has no bearing on us at all. It's irrelevant. For instance,、uh, we say that to each other. Where's that thought coming from? Where's that rooted from? Is that lined up with Christ? Right. We say that to our kids, even our four-year-old. Many, 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 many times a day. An hour. An hour, <laughs> many. But but the truth is, if we don't draw ourselves to the truth, then our heart will never be able to be filled with His desires. Because I'm telling you, when the truth goes in, your desires that were part of the old nature pass away. You don't even sometimes know what they are, and your desires become his desires. He gives you these new desires, and all of a sudden you have a desire to honor him by honoring your spouse. You have a desire to honor your spouse. You have a desire to raise your kids differently, and it's not you just like, oh, the word says this, so I'll do this willingly and obediently. Great, but as you do, he changes your heart because that seed is starting to take root, and now that identity is encompassing you, and you have forgotten the old nature. You've forgotten the dominion of darkness. Nature it has. You don't even have a choice to go to it because you don't consider it. But your heart cannot change until you're walking that out. Until you're refusing. Until you're taking assault against that old nature thinking that tries to come in. That pen that doesn't write snuck back into the group. You got to walk across the room and chuck it out. You don't have the time. You don't have the time not to because you don't want to pick it up again. 
you have got to take that assault and then he changes your heart. So your desires become like him. That's when you don't desire to read the newspaper in the world because you know that's coming from the dominion of darkness and people that don't know who they are and aren't brand new. <laughs> Christine's you, like, yes, you that's know, obvious you, already. <laughs> you no longer have a desire to turn on the television to news. You no longer have a desire to watch certain movies or shows. All of a sudden you're seeing what you used to think was good through the eyes of God and you realize it's not. And, and your heart changes towards these things. And then don't do this. Project that everyone else should now see that too. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't fast forward people. But you can see it that way and begin to live that way in righteousness and goodness. And your light will draw all men. Right? You cannot project what he's doing in you on others. But you can help others get there by not lying to them. By mm -hmm. speaking truth. By treating them as they are. Brand new in Christ Jesus. And that is how we get each other there quicker because we're not afraid to go nope last night we had an encounter with two people who were praying wrong i i had i had an encounter at school yesterday with someone who asked me to pray for their child and i apologized and repented to the lord because i did not say as forcefully what i should have said because this person has told me they don't believe in healing and then asked me to pray for their kid literally I prayed, but I was lying because I know they don't have the faith for healing. I did. I dishonored the Lord in my choice there because I should have responded with, what do you want me to pray for? Because her, she, she has told me very blatantly, she doesn't believe in healing, but I didn't. I did the whole, oh, bless them. The, no, she didn't want that. And she doesn't believe in it. So why was she even asking? And I should have been bold enough to not lie to her and say, why would you want me to pray when you don't believe healing? belongs to them or is yours instead i lied to her i had to repent to the lord for that because at that moment i should have called out on the floor her brand newness and what is true but she chooses not to believe so then why would you ask someone to pray for it it sounds ludicrous now mm -hmm. that we're saying it but it happens every day all day for people that don't believe in the brand newness is fully and avail fully available to them they don't believe it they say they don't believe it and they'll still ask for prayer and then how well does that represent Christ when you go into a, a prayer, for example, for that, you know, for healing, when there is no faith for the person, they're actually anti-faith. fleshly motion. How does that represent Christ? Well, it doesn't. It actually represents Christ the opposite and reinforces the lie in their life yeah. instead of being an avenue to present truth to them. Yeah. Because then it just gives her also fuel for, see, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Yeah, Pastor like, Kate rather prayed than and me nothing standing happened. And going, no, I already know you don't believe. So what is it exactly you'd want us to pray for? Now I'm giving fuel to the false religion of believing that God isn't, hasn't given us all things. And she'll say, see, mm -hmm. it didn't work. Right? I gave, I gave fuel to the enemy. So I had to repent for that. I lied essentially did i wake up that morning thinking i'm gonna lie did i even pray that prayer thinking i was like i had a little twinge actually not lying but like what are you doing this for you know we have to get that clearly in tune with the truth of brand newness that we may live it out and not limit not limit all things to all men that he has done through christ jesus for us and then put in us through salvation by faith and grace and any lie that we recognize that we're operating out of or a family member is operating out of. Oh, yeah. That's um, what I was then going to do. You call it out. We call it out. And we not just call it out like, that's wrong. Liar. No. Liar. <laughs> Don't do that. That's not going to get you any uh, any great uh, that advances. That only works. In but what do you do? You begin to pride. speak what the word says. This is their reality. They're not yeah. walking it out yet. Yeah. They're not operating in this. But this is who God says he is in them. And then you begin to, uh, like Romans 12 too, do not change yourself to be like the people of the world, but be changed within by a new way of thinking. Yeah. Choose to think different. So we sat down and to prayed. To focus with... on what the word says. And then what, every time that person pops into your head, you got to catch that are. thought. Yep. I'm like, nope, this is what the word says. And it helps to begin to speak it out of your mouth. Faith speaks. So when you don't just believe it and keep it quiet to yourself, no, you begin to speak, this is who they are. Yeah. Anytime that thought is challenged, oh, 
you can't be this. You can't do this. You're not enough. And God's like, forgotten you, you. You didn't earn it. You got to work a little harder, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, pray again, ask again. You're blocking something, right? Mm-hmm. So many Christian things that are developed by the twisted truth and not by the truth of God. Oh, something's blocking it. What's blocking it? He's given you all things. Get in the word, pray the word, remind the father of the word, stand in faith, speak it out. Okay. So yesterday someone said, will you pray again for something that we've already prayed for? So we were like, "Ah," and I get it. When you don't see it, you feel like you have to do something, but unless the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something, that's a lie. Again, we cannot be moved by our emotions, our feelings, or the lies popping in our head that that prayer was not effective. No, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much, is what one version says. Uh, I love the Amplified on that. It makes tremendous power available. Uh, Isaiah 55 says, when we release his word, it will not return void. Right. Actually, 55, 5 is his ways are higher than our ways. And then down farther, it says, but anyway. So like often people will pray, I release this. I, I, uh, I can't even think of it now because it is so absurd (laughs) once you know truth, you know, but they, the, the many words and they think they're praying and they're not praying the word at all. They're not praying anything from the word, but the many words about this thing and uh, that they're praying about. And then um, we prayed the word that we knew to pray, reminding the father of what he said. And we thanked him that he already heard us and it brings him glory to answer the prayer. And then I went on with responding to someone in ministry on my phone. And this person was like, are you done? And I was like, am I done with what? And they're like, are we done praying? And I was like, Uh, Yeah, I reminded God. I did what he says prayer is, and I trust that it's done. And uh, they said, well, are we praying wrong? And I said, are you asking me if you're praying wrong? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, yes. And then humbly, they said, how? And we showed them in the word. And what broke their heart most is that nobody in ministry or, or around them had told them that before then. And that they hadn't slowed long enough to hear what the word said about it. They were just convinced of what they were taught by a leader, who they trusted. This is how you pray and this is how you get results. And even though they weren't seeing results, they continued to pray that way because they trusted the leader. And they, they never went to the word and go, is this really how I should pray and does it do anything? And they were humble enough to go, oh my Lanta, I don't think we even know how to pray. And I'm like, we've been there. <laughs> Don't feel yeah. that that's not condemnation. We've been there. We're like, what were we doing? That's not condemnation. That's revelation. Mm-hmm. That brings you into all truth, his word. And that is powerful. So that is why we don't lie to each other. That's why we don't twist for each other's feelings. We don't soften the message. We don't, you know, the truth matters. Otherwise, these people have lived a lie for years. I've lived a lie for Mm -hmm. years thinking I was living truth because nobody was willing to possibly offend my carnal nature and tell me that's not in the word, Kate. Praying that way is not scriptural that I can see. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, right? To have a real conversation of, are you living out of your true brand newness or not? Have you made it something it's not? I see Tara. Can I call on her? Yes, let's do it. Miss Tara. Oh, did you accidentally raise your hand? (laughs) No, I raised my hand a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) Look it. You just moved. You just popped back up where you're just under the web. So I wouldn't have seen the hand. Oh, I apologize. I I think I know what it was. It was about um, how important it is to understand that when your sins are forgiven, your sins are just forgiven. Like that's the end of it. Because and that teaching is really vital for people who just get saved, including me, because I didn't have that teaching. So right after I got saved, I was like, all right. What am I going to do to prove to the Lord that I'm really sorry about all this? Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. like trying to do all this work, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, and it was, it was useless. And it yeah. was just this big swinging door open for the enemy to be like, ha ha, yeah. You know? Failed again. Yeah. Failed again. Fail, 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 fail. Yeah. So it took until I heard this teaching from you guys back when I did the reboot to really make me understand like, oh no, I'm brand new. I literally have to take all that garbage. Yep. I, I threw it out. Yes. It's gone. Yes. Garbage disposal, yes. shredded, yes. destroyed. <laughs> Not and able like, to be brought then, back. And then like who 
am I with this? Yes. Who am I now, right? Yes. So mm-hmm. that, that's what it was about, just how vital it is for people who are just like, you know, they're, yes. they're not getting this and, and, pe- and people need it. So, Lord, I yes. just pray that this message spreads far and Yes, <laughs> yes Lord. Thank you for yes, sharing. Thanks. Yeah, this is what um, high schoolers, mm-hmm. junior hires, elementary, and preschool learned this week was mm-hmm. this message in the final class for Handle with Care, and it will be built upon or watered in next month's series, Who Am I? No, sorry, it's called The, the Real, Real you. you. It's had a number yes. of names. Yes. Do in, you see what God process. sees? Yes. That's what we do at Christmas time. Do you see what God sees? <laughs> okay, never funny. mind. Mm. All right. No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that is how we need to address ourselves, our spouses, our friends, mm-hmm. our family, is we need yep. to be willing to call out uh, the twisted truth that has worked its way in and been called prayer, been called new identity, been called righteousness, because it's not. And we need to only get our answers from the word with each other. Yep. When you come to an impasse, you go to the word. So the answer to the question, how brand new are you? Completely. How brand new are the family members that are around you? If they've made Jesus their Lord and are passionately pursuing him, their actions say that, yes, they have made him Lord. Doesn't mean they're perfect, but that means they are completely brand new right. in Him. Right. And we're all on a journey, and that's why God's put us together as a body to work together to help one another, like sharpening with swords, yep. so that we can represent Him better. Right. All right, Christine, I see the hand. Yes. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. So I've been, um, even recently, like in the last year or so, in prayer with um, others and um, like if they're praying, if I go to them and they can ask, you know, for them to pray over me or with me, whatever. Mm -hmm. And if so, is the wording, is this like, so the wording, I mean, because I've even been encouraged to repeat after them. Um, So Christine, repeat after me, I come out of agreement with and I break the soul ties of I would say yes, because you don't see Jesus doing that ever. Right. Even with the woman that was caught in adultery, which that's pretty serious. He you didn't have say, to like, break off or cast out or anything. He just said, go and sin no more. Right. Like, it's Meaning it's a the done ability deal. Ability was available and, to her just like it was to him. And that was before even he had paid the price for everybody to sin, or right. paid the price for their sin, and made the avenue for us to partner with him, so that the word could be true about them that he, you know, we died with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives within me. And so, yeah, uh, I find breaking soul ties as a phrase does a whole lot less good than focusing on what the word says and renewing your mind to that truth. It's not as fast as praying a quick prayer, but it has, when we open up our word and start saying what the word says, that has all the power of God and of heaven backing it up to make that change. Um, I don't see the other in the word. So for that reason, and we have prayed that way. This isn't a judgment. We've been taught to pray that way. (laughs) But when we went to, yeah, when we went to the word, we were like, "Mm, I'm thinking maybe this is not what God said to do. So um, I I would encourage you to study it out for yourself. But um, a soul tie is simply an unrenewed area that you choose to rely on instead of on the brand new It's a perspective you. that you hold as an identity that's opposite of the brand new you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I think when I've heard the wording, it's been confusing, so thank you for clarifying that. Yes. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But at the, at the same time, you know, it, it just seems to go a little bit, you know, counter to just flat out, oh, listen, I'm a new creation, and yeah. I'm going to pray this out. Yeah. And right. Jesus, Jesus wiped out yeah. those guys. I just, yeah. I I Jesus like to, for all that, so. right, I like to jokingly imagine Jesus praying the way that you're 
saying. <laughs> and if we couldn't see that, if we can't see it in the word, then, pro- right? Can you imagine Jesus, like, putting his hands on Peter and be like, I break these soul ties. You know what I mean? Like, no. He's like, get behind me, Satan. Quit it. Like, you, you know, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Right. You're drawing from the dominion of darkness. Quit it. Right. Bottom line. So... I just, sometimes that's a funny way I like to do it with the Holy Spirit is imagine would, would, you know, I've prayed, I've prayed prayers even recently where he's like, what was that? You know, I'm like, oh, I drew like from, from remembering of how I used to pray. And that was like, Bleh, you know, so it's, it's not in a condemnation form. It's in a revelation. You just walk out of it and, 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 and let that truth be released in you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, we're going to pray over you guys. We're so glad that you were in here, unless you have a mm-hmm. final thing. Nope, because, you nope, know, I feel like we've hit it. Other than we can just repeat a thousand times, does the truth depend on your feelings? No. no. Does the truth depend on your feelings? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, we could just like, bloop, you know, they could just be running all day on our Facebook page. But it is okay next time you see me to call me Captain Daffodil. Oh, please no, just don't. don't. <laughs> please, please don't. <laughs> Okay. All right. You pray us out, please, (laughs) Captain Daffodil. God, I thank you. We worship you. That who you are is who we are. Yes. Because we've died and you you now live in us and through us. Help us align our minds with your truth. Help us align our words about ourselves and about our family and those around us in every sphere of influence to speak who you've created them to be, yes. not what we're currently seeing uh, them behaving or speaking or doing. Yes. But encourage them and build them up to come up higher. Use our words to make tremendous power available for them to step into the fullness of who you've created them to be. Yes. Holy Spirit, guide us into all truth. Show us the things that we may be partnering with or believing are true about us that are not. Show us the things that we may be reacting towards our kids or to our spouse or or even people in our other people in our lives that is based off of a lie or based off of past experience outside of you and help us to see them the way you see them. And use our words, align our thoughts with your perspectives, again, to make tremendous powerful power available for ourselves to treat them the way you would treat them yes. and for them to make the change. Yes. I thank you, Lord. That's not by our own might or by our own spirit that we're going to coerce people into being like you, but it's by your spirit. So we relent, we relax, yes. we step into your peace and your joy, into kingdom realities. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Yes. Help us to focus on you in that, yes. to focus on righteousness, focus on your joy flowing through us, your peace, and then living out of that, illuminating the lies that we've been believing and begin to be accurate representations of you in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And boldness. All right. Love you guys very much. Yes. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.